What is going on, Jet fans? I am Matt O'Leary, back with another video. Today, I want to recap one Jets drive. I was going to do that last night, but after the Dalvin Cook signing happened, like, I don't know, what, 40 minutes before one Jets drive came out? Or at least I finished up with the video, and it was, like, relatively close to when one Jets drive was going to start. So uh, I decided I'm going to watch one Jets drive when it came out at 8 o'clock. Uh, instead of posting a reaction after, I will do it in the morning because I wanted to stay on top of some of the Dalvin Cook stuff after. So here we are uh, recapping episode number two of One Jets Drive, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. There was, uh, I thought how it started was absolutely fantastic, and Michael Clemens doing yoga is really, really funny. It, it's really funny because it's just a hilarious juxtaposition of how he is on the field versus the guy he is off the field. Like, he had the, the black Air Force Ones next to him, the yoga mat. He's laying down. He has this unbelievably deep voice. He's an intimidating guy by just looking at him. And then he's doing yoga uh, and all this mental health stuff. It's like, again, it's just the, the crazy, the juxtaposition of how he is on the field versus how he is off the field. And by the way, I love that the team has this available to their players because mental health is inc is incredibly important and I think it's a underrated aspect of you know being in a being an athlete that people don't really talk about a whole lot but I'm glad that the Jets are taking it seriously and I'm glad that the Jets uh, players are taking advantage of having that at their disposal getting your mind right is 100% a part of the process uh, and, and I'm glad that Michael Clemens is is, is doing it again it was just Seeing see him laying on the mat with the the Air Forces next to him uh, is just too too funny. The next thing that stood out to me was uh, they were doing the photo shoot for the Jets legacy jerseys, and Garrett Wilson and Zach Wilson are making fun of Aaron Rodgers as he's going up there to take his pictures. They're talking about his his face mask is right after they went to the Hall of Fame. Um, and they're they're looking and they're like, oh my god, like his helmet looks like from 1950. That face mask is from 1950. And then one of them's like, yeah, it looks like Thomas Morstead out here. That's why he sees the whole field because he has like the one. It's not one bar, but it's essentially the just the one low bar, and he has this wide open face mask. So, you know, the young guys giving him a little bit of a hard time, which is good. I think that's been you know something that Aaron Rodgers has you know handled well, like. I don't know. Coming into the New York Jets, the big narrative was like, he's not going to get along with the young guys. He's going to be very standoffish. He's going to do things his own way. But every single piece of content that's been put out there since he's gotten here is kind of shown how he's, you know, embraced this older leadership role and like he gets it in the first episode or maybe it was hard knocks i'm sorry they kind of it blends together from a, a week ago michael hardman was talking about how um how he was seven years old when aaron Rodgers was drafted in the nfl and he was like you know giving him a little bit of a hard time and Rodgers just like oh my god like that's like, you know like it wasn't you know, he didn't take offense to it, but like he kind of plays into it, and it's it's fun. It's it's a good time. So I thought that was that was worth noting. I liked the clips that they showed from the Hall of Fame game, the, the little montage that they had. It was cool. They didn't, unfortunately, something that I would have liked to see that they didn't really do a whole lot of. They did this slightly more. Uh, when they showed the Panthers uh, practice, the joint practice, which I was surprised that they got that in. Quick turnaround from the One Jets Drive team. Love that. Uh, but they didn't really give you a ton of uh, in-game audio, which maybe they're, like, they're not allowed to or they didn't have the capability to do that. But I would have liked to see that. They had some, you know, some pregame stuff, uh, you know, with audio in included. But in game it was kind of just like a montage over the music and there wasn't really much of a narrative there it looked cool like the shots were beautiful and i, I loved watching it over the you know the the music but uh i would have preferred if they had either like a little bit of a narrative there or um some mic'd up audio or or, or something else to, to add on top of that next after that game they show the new york jets returning to practice at florham park training camp at florham park and there's a couple really wholesome moments uh, you had the the entire team out there, um, you know, with their with their family. Like Corey Davis is out there with his daughter, uh, Michael Hardman ho holding his son, and then there was a really nice moment where Aaron Rodgers goes and visits a young boy in a in a wheelchair. Um, and at first, like the parents are like, oh, like he's too busy. I don't think he's going to be able to come over. And like he sneaks up and comes around and is, you know, he talks to him. He signs his hat, signs that he's wearing a 
Aaron Rodgers uh, Jets shirt with like the number eight on it. He signs that and. You know, that really wholesome moment. That was that was really nice. And, uh, you know, for Rodgers to, to go out there and, you know, to, to do that, I thought was really cool. And just for, like, the, the family to be able to have the ability to go out and be on the field after. Like, I feel like the Jets do a really good job of, you know, making it uh, friendly for the, the team and easy for the team, right, to get their relatives out there, making it a good experience. That's important. Like, you always hear... For instance, they do like these rankings on the organization of like their facilities and how they handle things. Like supposedly Arizona Cardinals do like a god awful job. Like they make you pay for your own food, like stupid stuff like that at the facility where, you know, like making it nice and easy for your uh, players to have a good experience while they're you know, with the team, I think is super important. So I like to see that. They fed into the Jason Brownlee hive a little bit. Love that, my guy Jason Brownlee. They showed uh, some behind the scenes with his scouting. They really liked uh, him, and there were some positive things they said there. He, they showed him putting in a little bit of extra work and talking and just he's – he's an easy guy to root for. Uh, I, I don't know if he's going to make this roster. It seemed like he was going to be that wide receiver six, but Malik Taylor has come on really, really strong over the last few weeks. Maybe they keep Xavier Gibson, who they've used a little bit as a returner, but he dropped a couple of punts in back to back games, so maybe not. Uh, but Jason Brownlee, they, you know, in the process, they talked about, um, you know, how he finds like the soft spots and, you know, just gets open, contested catch guy. And they end up get getting him as a UDFA, but it seemed like he was someone that they thought maybe could have been drafted uh, in the sixth or seventh round. So uh, maybe he does stick on the roster. Uh, him getting shown in that, him getting shown in the show. That's weird, but uh, maybe he's a good sign that he's going to stick around. I like the behind the scenes of the Carolina trip. For instance, DJ Reed talking to the cornerback room got me really excited. He was not happy with their red zone performance. And just the standard that they this team holds themselves to is really cool to see. And Reed is the leader of that room as the veteran. And he's not like a crazy old veteran. That He was a younger free agent when he came to the New York Jets last year but it's very evident that he's a leader and that he's very well respected in that room i say it all the time that sauce gardner gets a ton of the recognition because of just how good he was as a rookie which is which is true he deserves it he was fantastic as a rookie one defensive rookie of the year but with dj reed he kind of goes under the radar a little bit i think he's one of the more underrated players not only in the league but on this team really really damn good cornerback too would be a cornerback one on most teams in the nfl uh he's just a very very good player and uh, a leader on this team and it's kind of you kind of see just how much this team respects him they showed some clips from the second preseason game and again quick turnaround man that was on saturday and they got it out for a monday post impressive stuff defensive line looks really really good uh, that was one of the big takeaways from that one. Robert Sala was incredibly happy after the game. It was like, I can't wait to watch this tape. That's New York Jets football. That's how we want to be in all the phases of the game, which is true. You know, they were successful on offense. Their defense played elite, and the special teams was really good. That's how you have to win in this league. You have to be good in all three phases. And the last thing for me, I like the interaction that they had between Zach Wilson and Nathaniel Hackett, uh, where they talked about uh, it was after the touchdown uh, throw and uh, it's very easy to see why Aaron Rodgers likes Nathaniel Hackett so much and why players like Nathaniel Hackett so much. He has a really good energy uh, about him, and he's you know really invested in these guys. And, and, and look, obviously Rodgers is the main focus. He's QB1, as, you know, as he should be, and Zach's a little bit of a reclamation project. But I'm rooting for Nathaniel Hackett to uh, maybe work some magic there. Uh, with Zach Wilson, and hopefully he keeps him uh, improving. But Zach and Hackett looked like they had a good relationship. I mean, it's just that one clip, so you don't want to read too much into it. But from what we were shown and what we saw, I like the conversation that they were having where they were talking about it. And uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts on episode two down in the comments. Thank you so much for tuning in. Once again, I'm Matt O'Leary, and I'll catch you next time. <laughs>